Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Alex here. If this is your first time bumping into my channel, my name is Alex and I create videos about Malta related to people that are planning to move to Malta or those of you that you just want to visit this island. On my huge honor today, I do have another expert who lives here in Malta, but he's coming from a Nordic country. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Tom. Tom, welcome to my channel. Thank you. How are you feeling, first of all? Oh, I'm good. I'm Excited? Al I'm always good. You're always good. <laughs> <laughs> Many people now uh, are watching this uh, podcast that we are doing because I asked on the Expats Malta group where you are admin on Facebook whether they have any questions and what they would ask if they see a podcast of Tom and I. <laughs> Here we are. We are doing this podcast for you guys to have <laughs> some nice <laughs> entertainment and a lot of information about Malta. Tom, welcome. Thank you. You are originally from... I'm originally from uh, Norway. Norway. A uh, Swedish uh, citizen. Swedish citizen. How long you've been in Malta and why Malta? When did you uh, move? I've been in Malta for six and a half years now. Okay. I moved here in January 2018. Okay. And uh, the you reason... in winter time. Yes. Uh, the reason I moved, uh, brutally honest, because I wanted to get out of the UK... Really? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to... Norway, UK? <laughs> I was, uh, I was uh, living and working in the UK. Oh, that's why. Okay. Uh, in Luton, which will make all your UK viewers mm -hmm. go, ah, okay, that's why he wanted to leave. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been in UK, by the way? Uh, just one year. I didn't know about this, that you were in UK. Yes, okay. uh, uh, I moved there from uh, Sweden. Okay. And uh, did not like it there at all. Not your vibe? No. <laughs> so I ended up in Malta pretty much by chance because I was interviewing for three different jobs mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Sofia, in Bucharest, and in Mosta. Really? And the one in Mosta was the first one to give me an offer. <laughs> <laughs> you grabbed it and you arrived? Yes. <laughs> wow. 2016, no, 2018 18. was the year. Uh, back in that time, it was different. Now it's 2024. How long did it take you to settle down when you arrived in Malta back in 2018? Uh, to settle down, kind of like to decide that, yeah, this is where I'm going to stay. Uh, took a few months. Okay. Uh, honestly, I had the feeling the second I stepped out of the airport, because I was coming from, uh, I had been visiting my family in Norway and in January. Mm -hmm. And stepping out of the airport, seeing the palms and realizing that, yeah, I can go here in short sleeves in January. <laughs> I was like, I like this place. <laughs> yes. You know, I loved, I'm happy that we are doing this uh, podcast together. And I'm happy that you are my first guest on a podcast because you have been living in Malta for a while. And you are also an admin on Expats Malta, the group on Facebook. Yes where you have over 137,000 uh, subscriber, which subscri subscribers, members, which is 10,000 more than my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> and we see a lot of comments. Uh, yes. You are very active on it. I'm very active on it. And we see a lot of people talking about Malta, a lot of people moaning about Malta. Yes. And this group doesn't have only expats. It has Maltese people as well. Yes. I have a question here when we are talking about the group and the comments that we are seeing. In my opinion, from what I can see as a member of this group, I see a lot of moaning. A lot of yes. people are moaning about Malta. And you as an admin, you're also seeing comments that you don't even approve maybe to go on the page. Yes. In your opinion, what is the whole point of people moaning about Malta? <laughs> well, I think uh, it kind of comes a bit down to it's easier to complain than Praise. Tell people that you're happy mm -hmm. when you're online. You don't you don't go online to tell people that, oh, everything is going fine. Everything is as expected. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So, I have... uh, it's easier to complain than uh, post about being happy, because if you are if you are that happy, then you are not on Facebook. You are outside. You are enjoying. <laughs> 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 we are both on Facebook, but we are both in love with this place yes. and being happy here. Nice. You know. When we were talking about this group now, you remember yesterday I said, uh, let me post a comment <laughs> on Expats Malta. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to pull out my phone now because we agree that I'm going to post on Expats Malta a comment asking people 
if they see us on this pod- podcast, what questions do they have for us? Wait, why I can't find it? Did you delete it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you deleted it before we started the podcast. <laughs> okay. There are quite a lot of comments already, but we're going to start with like uh, the top ones. When I click all comments, the first one that is coming out, it's from Raf. <laughs> Be open-minded and accept criticism. <laughs> It has eight likes, but you replied to him and your comment has 18 likes <laughs> and you said, ain't gonna happen, my dude. <laughs> Why do people have this type of opinion about you that you are critical? Uh, well, I can be critical, mm-hmm. uh, of course, but uh, very often it kind of boils down to just disagreements. Uh, if I make a decision that they disagree with, uh, quite often you will see that they will see that as being censored, they will see it as uh, yeah. me imposing my personal opinion, mm-hmm. uh, which kind of, I'm, I'm kind of proud to say that not many people in the group actually knows my personal opinions, mm-hmm. because I, I get accused of having opinions in every direction. It's like I'm a right-wing communist. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I like your opinions and I like your comments always. <laughs> what you're saying, and I do agree with 99% of the time with you. Oh, no no one will ever agree with everything. So. Exactly. <laughs> we, we are here, to, we share opinions, and we all s- we look at the same thing, but see it yeah. differently. Like two and, people can uh, see it yeah. at the same. And in terms of a Facebook group like this, uh, people having different opinions, of course, that's just how it is. Yeah. But uh, it very often comes down to how you communicate your mm-hmm. opinion. Yeah, it's like politics when it comes to Facebook, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There is a very nice comment that I saw it, and it comes for both of us. Majority of the comments were directed to you. You're more yep. famous than me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, But I, I there don't is, think so. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this lady, Josen Kassar. She is a Maltese journalist, and her comment has 11 likes, and she's asking... What made Tom become admin of Expats Malta? And then her second question is, and what made you, Alex, starting doing your videos? Your turn. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What made me become admin was uh, basically uh, uh, there were only two admins when I uh, moved Mm. to Malta and joined the group. And uh, it was very toxic at that point. Really? And, uh, a lo- yes, and uh, there was a lot of work to do for the admins that were there. Wow. Uh, I, uh, I offered to help out uh, because I had previous experience with large online communities being a moderator. Mm-hmm. So uh, I offered to help out with that. Uh, Will, which is the founder of the group, uh, accepted that. And uh, that's how it started. Now I think you're the most active of all the admins that are on this <laughs> group. <laughs> well, yes, it's, it's me and Helen. Uh, we are the most active. Uh, I think I am the, I am the one that's may, maybe the most recognizable. Yes. Uh, yeah, even she, she has like, she's very precise and I think she knows uh, the laws here in Malta. Yeah. I've noticed like when someone is asking something about, I don't know, about visa or citizenship, she's so precise with her yes. comments. I'm like, wow, girl, what are you doing? What do you do for a <laughs> living? Are you a lawyer, a notary or what? <laughs> no, the, it's, I think it's something that comes with, uh, especially when you, when you join the admin or mod mm-hmm. team uh, for a group like this, you get a lot of questions. And then, and then you research. And you're even, so you, you, you basically use yeah. your research skills yes, to learn so that you can help uh, people. You're the same as well. <laughs> like sometimes when I see a comment and I'm going like, oh, that's a good question. And then I see your answer. It's like, <laughs> all with all details. I'm like, well done, Tom. Uh, it's not nice. because I know everything, but uh, it's more the ability to find the information. Yeah. I'm going to answer the question that Josen has about me, what made me start doing uh, videos. Uh, maybe it's interesting for you to hear yes. as well and the audience. Sometimes I speak about this, but sometimes I don't speak about this. I don't know. I started when the pandemic hit, so there was nothing to do. Mm-hmm. I was bored and I always wanted to start a YouTube channel. And I started uh, doing makeup videos because mm-hmm. I used to do a lot of makeup back in the days. It was kind of like my primary, my secondary job. It was more of a hobby. Yep. 
And when the pandemic hits, I started doing YouTube videos. And it was based on my makeup skills and my makeup videos, which I mm. still have them on my YouTube channel. I didn't delete them, although they have like less than a thousand views. And at one point, after five, six videos, I noticed that people are more interested about me rather than my makeup skills. So I said, yes. okay, let me do a video about get to know me. So I did a video of it and it blew up. It had over a thousand, blew up uh, over a thousand. <laughs> it was over a thousand views. And um, in that video, I mentioned, like, I live in Malta. Yeah. From here, a lot of people started asking, oh, wow, speak about Malta, speak about your life there. And I started doing videos live in Malta, moving mm -hmm. in Malta, work in Malta. And 2021 was when I officially moved from doing videos about uh, makeup into mm. doing videos about uh, Malta. Yep. And considering my YouTube channel back in the days was called Your Beauty by Alex, I said, okay, how I'm going to name now the channel, but mm. still to have my name on it. Yep. And it just became Alex in Malta. Yep. And now it became like a brand. And even though I do get a lot of recognition, I still feel like I'm very normal. Yes. I still... That's, uh... I look like a normal guy, yes. <laughs> someone that talks. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Because sometimes I receive messages like, I saw you and I was so scared to approach. I'm like, why? <laughs> if you see that I have thousands of viewers, that doesn't mean that I'm someone yeah. that is hard to approach. Anyway, um, then it just kept on going. So, Josen, I answered your question. I started my YouTube uh, channel as a joke and now it just became <laughs> <laughs> my full-time job. <laughs> I do have another question that uh, it's not a question. It's kind of like a statement, but at the question at the same time from Colin, he says, Tom does a great job. Maybe ask him if he's secretly a masochist with all the shit he <laughs> puts up with. This is because you get a lot of comments. Well, it's not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so you're a masochist. <laughs> you like the pain. <laughs> no, but it, it's really not that bad. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sometimes people will go overboard. Uh, there's been instances of threats, etc., from some really idiots. But uh, it's no. it's mostly no, nor it's mostly normal conversations. Even you know, even people who are unhappy with having stuff deleted, etc. Usually, mm -hmm. if they contact me in a private message, they get an explanation and it's fine. Yeah, you don't get hate comments like someone to verbally attack uh, you some, sometimes but mostly sometimes. mostly that happens in private messages really because and if uh, you give your opinion then some, someone disagrees mm. yeah of course it happens but yeah it's not something that i really take that it's like, it's like it doesn't affect me yes i'm reading another one and i'm laughing this is about the <laughs> earthquakes when we had earthquakes in malta <laughs> i think that if, we ha if you have 137 members, I think 140,000 people will comment on Expert Malta. Yeah. There was an earthquake in Paula. There was, a, there was an earthquake in Ormi. Yes. And <laughs> you pull up with a statement about these earthquakes that, earthquakes that people should not <laughs> post a lot. And there is Ashan asking, how many earthquake posts are allowed <laughs> per quake? He has 14 likes. <laughs> well, Ashan, four. Four, four, okay. <laughs> one from no. the south, one from the central, one from the west. <laughs> no, it's, uh, but, I mean, this is quite common. This is what happens whenever there, whenever something happens. There will be people from every little city. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, I felt it here as well. And of course, because it's not, co it's not common. It's something that engages people. You know what I wanted to ask you now before I continue asking the, uh, reading the questions from the uh, people that they posted on mm. the post? Tell me three things that you like about Malta and three things that you don't like about Malta. I wanted to ask you this at the very <laughs> beginning before I start with the hmm. questions. Three things that I like about Malta. The people. Uh, when you say people, local people? Yes, or the Maltese Malta. people. No. Even though some of them think I don't like them, I actually, <laughs> I actually do. Yeah, because you have a lot of Maltese on that group. Yes, <laughs> and most of the Maltese people are very, very nice. So they are friendly, they are open. Uh, very, they can be a bit loud, but that's yeah. that's just the southern, <laughs> that's just the southern, the so, southern European attitude. I yeah. think so. they know they are loud. It's yes, <laughs> <laughs> they know. <laughs> uh, I, I like the people. I like the climate here. Yeah, uh, being a Norwegian, I don't miss the cold at all. <laughs> what about the super hot summers? I run away. <laughs> run away. <laughs> uh, the, the summers can be a bit too much, but uh, yeah. it's livable. 
it's livable. And so we have climate, people, and, and one more. In general, the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've explained this to a few other people as well, how it is. It's like it doesn't matter how stressful of a day I have in the office, anything like that. I am never more than 10 minutes away from having yeah. a cup of coffee and looking out on the Mediterranean. Yeah. It's like I leave the office and I'm on vacation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's what I say as well. Nice. So I would, I, I mean, I love it here. It's same. I wouldn't have been here for six years if I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I've been nine years now yep. going to the tent. Wow. I love it as well. When I think about Malta, anyway, not about me <laughs> later. <laughs> the second part of this question was the three things that you don't like about Malta. Uh, public transport. Public th- you use it <laughs> from time to time? I used to. Oh my God, me twice in my life, never again. Uh, never. I used, to pu- I used public transport for quite a long time. But I also have to say that uh, Talinia was the ones that, who recruited me to actually get my driver's license. Really? <laughs> I managed for over 40 years without a driver's license. Wow. But with uh, the buses in Malta, I just couldn't take it anymore. I don't, <laughs> you know, for me, I'm very sensitive and why I don't like them. Before we go jump to the second two things, sorry to interrupt you. No problem. I don't like the pub, the public transport because of the roads here. And when I'm on a bus, because I did it twice and I mm. was very sick after, uh, the way people are driving here, like the bus drivers and yes. the roads they are, I get sick. <laughs> I swear to God, I had headache, I have mm. stomachache and I, I can't take it. I can't take it. Even when I'm in a taxi. Now I I was in a taxi. You saw me when I arrived yeah. from Xira to Sliema. Yeah. Five minutes ride. I was already. <laughs> if I'm not driving, I'm sick in the car. So ah, this may be just me uh, and my system, but that's why I don't mm. like being on a public transport. Sorry, um, I interrupted you. Now the um, other two things. The other two things uh, that you don't like. Bureaucracy. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything needs to. It's, it's kind of like they need to make things as complicated as possible. Yeah. Uh, for. For something as simple as the uh, identity Malta setup, where they have gone, a, they have gotten a far, uh, quite a far way now. They have more things online, etc. Yeah. But you do it online. They tell you to submit all your documents. Then you have to print them out <laughs> <laughs> and give them the hard copies as well. What's the it's point like, of having yeah. gone online and yeah? They're the same with uh, opening a bank account. It's like submit the PDF of all the documents that they want. Mm -hmm. Then they give you an appointment two months into the future and tell you, oh, yeah, and you need to bring all the documents that you just sent us. (laughs) It's like... (laughs) (laughs) Maltese way, Maltese bureaucracy. (laughs) They're kind of trying to get like with the times and move more and more things online. But at the same time, they're kind of stuck in this kind of awkward way of doing things, old fashioned. I don't know why, though. And... Everybody knows, like, it's common that people say about the thing that they don't like about Malta, it's bureaucracy. Yeah. I've been doing videos for the past few years, what people they don't like about Malta, and everyone is just strictly saying bureaucracy. Yeah. It's public, we know, they know, and still nothing has been done about that. And I wonder yeah. why. So <laughs> open call, please <laughs> fix this bureaucracy in Malta. So this well, is number two. And number three that you don't like about Malta? So it's probably going to irk quite a lot of the Maltese, but uh, because especially in the season we are in the middle of now, they're politicians. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, but uh, looking at the government, also looking at the other end of, like the other side, no. it's just... <laughs> you think that something is wrong in Malta at the moment? Is there something yes. that can be fixed? Something that I think it can be fixed. Is, mm-hmm. Definitely, it can be fixed, but uh, that's up to the Maltese because mm-hmm. we, it's like you and me, we we can't vote on the government in Malta. Mm-hmm. We can vote on the local council, but we can't vote on the ones who actually decide how things are yeah. going to be. Oh. And uh, it's this is just my opinion. But uh, it seems to be a kind of a culture of trying to enrich themselves instead of actually doing what's best for the country. So, You think so? You know, because I'm coming from a Balkan country, and yep. in Balkans, this is a completely other topic, but and certain words I can't use them on YouTube because of my monetization. <laughs> but, you know, when... 
they take something, they take, if there is a hundred percent, uh, our will take like 90% and they will mm. leave 10% for the country, for yeah. the nation. I think that here it's a bit different. I think here it's like 60% goes in one pocket, 40% yeah. is for the country. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind I think of like here that. they're giving more, to be honest. I don't know, maybe because it's a smaller country. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, Malta is just one big urban area. So, be, yeah. I'm so, I, I'm sorry, Robert Abella, but um, <laughs> <laughs> being prime minister in Malta is kind of like being a mayor in a Nordic country. N- nor- well, Nordic in country city. in in any uh, mainland uh, larger city. Yeah. So, uh, of course, with the I size, would say, yeah, I would say be- being a prime minister comes with a bit more responsibility than a mayor, but size-wise, yeah. it's kind of you're kind of. Re- Rule, ruling over is kind, mm-hmm. of, kind of the wrong word, but <laughs> I know what you mean. we don't have a king. But <laughs> you know that Malta is the same size as the capital city in my country, Skopje, yeah. where I'm coming from. It's a bit smaller than Oslo. Really? <laughs> wow. And in my country, we have one million that they are living in the city. Yeah. And here in Malta, we have 550,000 at the moment. And yeah. it's the same land. Yeah. And sometimes when I see people that are complaining about the traffic in Malta and how busy it is, hectic <laughs> and all of that, I'm like, just go to Skopje, go to yeah. my country and just see in my capital what's going on. Cars are parking on the pavement. Like you yeah. can't pass by, you can't walk on your on the pavement. There no, is no possibility. Uh, Cars are parked there. It's crazy. Oh no, that's God. one of the things I see here. It's like especially the complaints about driving. And since I'm a new driver in Malta. How long have you been driving in Malta? Uh, I got my license in September last year. Really? Oh, fresh <laughs> B on the road. <laughs> how do you feel like, how is the road for you, the traffic and everything? It's nothing. It's not nothing special. Mm-hmm. It's There's a lot of traffic, yes, but uh, I, honestly, it's not that bad. Yeah, I feel the same. It seems to be quite a bit of exaggeration with a lot of the complaining because it... It's not like people are trying to kill me every day on the roads. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I, ha- I, I have a nice little drive to the office in the morning. I listen to my music. I have my coffee. How yes, long does uh, it take you to arrive from home to the office? Uh, usually about uh, half an hour to 40 minutes. And you live in? I live in uh, Borumla. And you work, work in, in St. Julian's. In St. Julian's. Okay. Well, and you half an hour, it's... Usually it's, uh, it's it's usually it's getting through Marsa that is the that's the yeah always big, uh, bottleneck always when I go to work I leave uh, at six thirty six forty from Zuri, and I'm in seven ten hmm. in Sliema so for me it's the same half yeah. an hour and it's earlier in the morning but the majority of the traffic the congestions happens in uh, Marsa always yeah. like in ten minutes I'm from Zuri to Marsa and then twenty minutes Marsa yeah, to exactly. Sliema. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> This is important for people to know. uh, That's the one I noticed as well as soon as I started driving. It was kind of like as soon as I got get to uh, the area around Paula, Mm -hmm. that's where it starts kind of choking up. And then as soon as I get up to regional, then it's fine again. Paula is quite busy as well. Yes. I noticed even when I was doing a live stream in Paula at five o'clock in the afternoon, it's very busy. I think people are coming back from work and it's quite central. So a lot of people Uh, are passing through Paula. It's kind of, it's it's kind of a bus hub for Mm -hmm. everyone going towards the south. So yeah, I, you're right. You said it well, the bus (laughs) hub. There is another comment. I'm going to get back to the comments (laughs) because some people that are watching this video now are expecting that they're question if, is going to be com- answered. If they commented, they <laughs> want their answer. <laughs> there is uh, one question from, wait, I lost it. It's here, from Gino Manfredi. He says, why don't you change the name of the group to Moaning Experts <laughs> in Mount? <laughs> I don't know if you saw this, but I told you I'm going to ask you some of them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this comes back to the very beginning of our podcast when I said, how many, how, why do people are moan? Why do people moan about Malta yeah. so much? Well, it's noticeable. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's also like I said. It's By the way, easier. he has fourteen likes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's e- it's easier to complain than post about your positive experiences. Yeah, and uh, I also think quite a lot of what is seen as moaning is not really moaning. It's just kind of getting a little bit of the frustration out because mm-hmm. people get frustrated at things like bureaucracy. Uh, they will complain about banks being difficult because the banks are difficult. Uh, it's not necessarily moaning. It's pointing out that 
there are things that can be improved. Yes, it's true. There are things that can be improved here on the island. Actions can be taken. Yep. And I don't know if they're putting this as a cart in under their sleeve <laughs> 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 before elections <laughs> or what's going on. I have no idea. There is one very funny uh, comment that I wanted to read. And it, it's funny just <laughs> from Paul. Paul, we are reading this just because you posted. <laughs> How many pastizzi do you need to consume to be integrated in the Maltese society? Do any experts <laughs> in Malta do you need to change a bulb? Second uh. part we are not reading, but... <laughs> this is a joke, internal joke, about how many pastizzi you need to <laughs> <laughs> to be integrated in the Maltese society. Insane. Well, I, don't, I don't know how many. I, I know how many pastizzi I have eaten. Do it's you like it pastizzi? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like kini? No. Okay. So, so uh, I will... It's over. <laughs> I'm joking. I will never be integrated into the Maltese society. Because you don't eat pastizzi <laughs> and you don't drink kini. I have, e- I have eaten five pastizzi since I moved here. <laughs> Do you think we as an expat community in Malta, we are quite strong? Are we united, do you think? Yes and yeah, no. I don't know. Uh, a, bi- a little bit of both. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, we can be united in some things. Uh, you have, uh, for instance... Uh, as shown by uh, Patricia Graham. Uh, I who met her. Who started... Just, I uh, think she might be watching now, Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, Patricia is a very nice woman. Yeah, I love her. Uh, She's and uh, she, I mean, they got uh, the arms billing issues mm-hmm. uh, that they were working on and got uh, I th- not necessarily sorted, but at least improved. <laughs> Uh, the difference in, in pricing on buses that the Maltese uh, had, where foreigners were paying more than locals. I didn't know about this. Which, which, which was, was illegal. Really? When was this? I can't remember. Uh, I think that Patricia will have to comment and uh, let, uh, let us know let if us I'm know. wrong. But it's been but I, I think that was, six uh, years yeah, since I, we were here. No, right? that was before I came. Uh, okay. uh, I think that was when uh, Arriva. Uh, took over back in 2011, 2012, oh, okay. around that time. Oh, okay. It's been quite a while yeah. now. But that is things that uh, expats have managed to unite on and mm-hmm. actually get something done. Uh, we also had, uh, when uh, in the COVID uh, period, uh, when they first announced uh, these vouchers, I don't know if you remember, because the, uh, the finance minister said only for Maltese citizens. Ah, yes, the one like 25, 25, yeah. 25, that, yes, I and remember. And they launched that for Maltese citizens only, which was also illegal. I remember, yes. And uh, that that was also uh, changed, because there was quite a massive outcry. It was like, okay, so what about all the foreigners who are paying taxes we pay taxes as well, as well. <laughs> the same we pay taxes we pay them rents we pay we yeah. work for low, lower salaries here <laughs> oh my god yes and now i remember so, about this i used to donate them i think we got like two uh, yeah. envelopes yes yeah i used to donate them and i donated the one that we got now the check which mm. you posted this morning <laughs> i got mine a few days ago <laughs> yeah, i got mine yesterday you got it yesterday <laughs> I, it, I found it by mis- not by mistake. I found it in my post box, and I'm like, "Oh my god, what is this?" And then I opened it, and I saw the amount and a check, and I'm like, "Oh my god, thank you so much!" <laughs> so thank you so much for the checks. <laughs> you know, um, like, our th- thank you for the checks. You're still not getting my vote. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting my vote. <laughs> you know, uh, I think that our expert community now, since we ask, I ask you about, do you think it's united? Yeah. I will answer from my side quickly as well. I think, yes, we are united here. I think that, and also I'm fe- I'm feeling that there is quite a lot of people that are expats are against Maltese, and then you have Maltese mm. that are against expats. Speaking about, I remember there was a comment. Wait, let me try to find it. Uh, somebody asked you, why are you deleting comments that are ah, in yes, yes. <laughs> Maltese language. I'm trying to find where it was. Yes, I, rem- I remember seeing something like that. Let me see. If, why don't you question? Let me try to find it where it is exactly. Ah, I can't find it now. No, I, Maybe I, he deleted I don't, yeah. it. I remember there was a comment uh, like that. And I mean, what I can say about that is I don't delete. The, we don't delete the comments because they are in Maltese. 
uh, we delete them because they are not in English, because uh, English is the group language, so to say, yes. uh, because I, that's the language that most people will understand. Uh, so it's not deleted because it is in Maltese. It, mm -hmm. it, it gets the same treatment as Norwegian, um, Macedonian, yeah. Serbian, Russian, any. <laughs> yeah, if it's uh, not in English, then there is no point yeah. because it's an expat Malta. Yes. Yes. It's an expat community, but we all speak in English. We yeah. don't speak Maltese exactly. or any other language. And there has been some who goes like, well, we are in Malta, but I, I want to speak Maltese. And for mm -hmm. me, that's like, well, that's not a problem. You can speak Maltese all you want, but you're in a group that, that is actually set up for non-Maltese yes. people. So... <laughs> Do you think that, no, not do you think, but would you, what would you advise some expats that are watching this podcast now and they want to move to Malta? I know it's... Plan ahead. Plan ahead. What uh, would you give them as an advice, a helping hand? hundred uh, euros. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, for me, the most, the most important thing is that you need to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to kind of know why are you coming? Uh, what what are you expecting to get out of it? Uh, kind of a bit hypocritical maybe because I didn't do that much planning myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> But you, you may remained here for over yeah. 60 years. <laughs> But uh, the most important thing for uh, that kind of goes for expats no matter where they go. Mm -hmm. Always have an exit strategy. Yeah, th this is good. I think you answered this in one of my comments when I posted uh, I th I is think Malta so. still... Yeah, and yeah. when I read it, it was good. I remember I posted a comment saying, is Malta still a good destination for people to move to in 2024? Mm. I did the same in 2023. I did yeah. the same in 2022. And speaking about this, we spoke last week. In those posts that I did them in 2022 and 2023... I can find them on the group under my yeah. name and I can see all the comments. The same people that they told me no and the same people that they were bashing down Malta and moaning about Malta in 2022 are moaning again in my post in 2024. It's been yeah. two years, people. You're still here. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Is it good or is it bad to move to Malta? I don't understand. Uh, that's a bit like, like we talked about. Uh, some people are kind of stuck here. Mm -hmm. uh, like the, uh, There can be family. It can be that they simply can't afford to get out. That's, I, that's where I have, uh, that's why I say ha have an exit strategy. Yeah. Always, o in, if things doesn't work out, you need to be able to leave. Because yeah. uh, if you come here with nothing and then you don't find a job or you lose your job and you still have nothing, you're stuck. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. You know, I do agree to a certain extent about this, but I don't agree that someone is stuck because either they don't have money or mm. whatsoever. There is, as you said, you need to plan to have some kind of exit strategy. Yes. And either work on it and yeah. exit from this country instead of bashing down and complaining yeah. about it. Because uh, it, It's kind of also, if, if you can't leave, uh, which is fair enough, if, if you... If you are in a situation where you can't leave, uh, deal with it. <laughs> the ones that they cannot leave, and I feel sorry for them, are South Asian people that they pay yeah. thousands of euros to enter Malta. Yes. And then they end up working for companies, and then the, these companies are just providing them with visa and yeah. send them to work factories, hotels, restaurants, cleaners, dishwashers, whatever it comes for like 800 to 1,000 euros a month yeah. for 40, 40 hours per week. And then they're like, if you want more, you're not getting paid for your leave, but we are going to yeah. pay you additional hours without any overtime. And they are abused. Yes. And I understand these people. And then I understand them from another hand why they're opting to leave 20 in one apartment. I was on a, I was on a live stream in Valletta. And by the way, the chair is making squeaky noise. People will think I'm farting all the time. <laughs> Girl. Um, I did a live stream in Valletta and I met a guy, Indian guy, mm. that he jumped on the camera when he saw me. He was like, oh my God, Alex, nice to meet you. And then he said, I really want to tell you something. We are 20 people living, living in one apartment and we are all paying 175 euros. And none of the portals took this part of the live stream to make a story mm. out of it. 
but they did make stories out of me when I said a word called Ostia in uh, Maltese yeah. and everyone made stories about it. Anyway, that's another topic. I think that, Jesus, I jumped from one topic to another topic. <laughs> I speak a lot in this. I don't know if it's a microphone or what. I'm speaking a lot. Um, but anyway, we're going to start concluding soon in a few minutes. I think that these people are the ones that they don't have an exit plan and that they have yep. to work. But I'm also seeing that these people are the least one that you will see on Expats Malta group that they're complaining about Malta. Yep. I think the most complaints are coming from us Europeans and European uh, Union citizens. I think maybe I think a lot of that is comes from kind of a sort of entitlement, mm-hmm. privilege. Uh, it takes less for us to be unhappy. Really? Because we, we are used to everything being so kind of like perfect and yeah. everything is going our way. So we kind of panic at the just a little hint of resistance. Mm. <laughs> it it um, makes sense, yes. Because I noticed that some of my Finnish friends from Finland, when they moved to Malta and uh, they entered <laughs> into their apartments and they felt the quality of the windows, the walls, the carpets, <laughs> hearing your neighbors on top of you, dragging chairs. They were like, what on earth is this? And I'm like, well, <laughs> Maltese building. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I have to say I noticed the same when I moved here. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when I moved here, I moved into, I moved to St. Paul's Bay. Uh, mm-hmm. Brand new apartment. It was kind of presented as luxurious. And then when I entered the apartment and I look around and I was like, this is <laughs> kind of subpar standard when you come from the Nordics. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. Yes, with the like, Nordic people. Here, like here it is luxurious. For me, it was like, oh, this is kind of like social you guys ha- This rich. is kind of like social housing. <laughs> you guys are rich, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but then uh, that's also where some of the complaints will come from because yeah. like, I, I am used to the Scandinavian standard. And yes, it's higher than here, I will have to say. It's like a, lu- a luxury apartment in Scandinavian standards is very difficult to find here. You know, I just remembered that I also posted on my stories on Instagram that we are doing a podcast with um, with an expert. I said expert, expat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got quite a lot of comments, but there is one guy that I really like. His name is Chris from Hungary, and he wants to move to Malta. He's living in Mexico at the moment. Hi, Chris. And he mm. sent quite a lot of uh, comments, and I want to find only one of his comments so we can answer it, both of yes. us. Let me see which one I can choose how to start to relocate. Okay. Realistically, how much money you need in your pocket when you move to Malta? Let's answer this as the last question. Uh, So he's talking about like when he arrives. Yeah. Well, assuming that he's coming and that he has a job to come to so that he will actually have more money coming in Mm -hmm. (laughs) after a while as well. uh, You need to, for me, you need to calculate... Rent, deposit, possible uh, agency fee. Mm-hmm. So that would mean two and a half months worth of rent mm-hmm. before you get the key to actually enter the apartment. Which uh, is quite a lot of money on yes. an apartment. Uh, if you want a decent, if you want a decent quality apartment, you have to calculate in at least a thousand euros these days. Yeah. And so if you that's two and a half thousand already straight away. That's before you even have a plan like just to have a place to stay. Yeah. Then you need to uh, have money to live on. You need your groceries, everything, at least for the first month until you get paid from your from your job. So another three, four hundred. Is that how much you spend? Three, four hundred monthly per groceries or? Uh, to be honest, we spend a bit more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you hit out or you, yeah. you yes. hit? M- well, both. Both. And, uh, Probably not the best at budgeting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, same, same. Whatever. If I decide to eat the whole month, vault and bolt and keep on ordering, that's what I'm doing. I've been doing it for a while. <laughs> but I, I mean, I don't want to use my bud, like my grocery budget, as the standard because I know mm-hmm. it's a bit higher than normal. Yeah. Uh, so, but with the prices as they are now, I think around three hundred at least is not unrealistic uh, because you don't want to have just rice and noodles mm-hmm. every day <laughs> <laughs> some people that's what they do unfortunately yeah <laughs> so with this 
if we have like um, an average of a thousand euros for an apartment, two and a half months, uh, plus the groceries, if it's 300 euros a month, that would be above 3000 euros that you definitely need to have with you if you're moving to yep. Malta, if you want to live on your own. Yep. Yes, once I think I said that a budget that you need to have when you're relocating to Malta should be like 5000 that's, that with. seems about fair because there will also be other expenses because yes. you want to set up your internet connection. Yes. You want to travel around a bit. Yes. Uh, Public transport. And also if you're moving to Malta first, you need to stay for a week in a hostel or a hotel. Yeah. But even hostels are expensive. Yes. Especially if you're moving in summertime, you will find hostels that are 40, 50 euros. Yeah, Nothing exactly. lower than so, that. So if you stay I, for I, 10 I think, days. Yeah, I think 5,000 is uh, quite realistic. Yeah. I know uh, when I when I moved here, uh, it, I think it was, yeah, it would be around five thousand that mm -hmm. I kind of like had in my pocket when I came yeah. to to uh, have something to live on. Yes, <laughs> I can't remember how much I started with, but I remember that I was here for eight months, <laughs> just <laughs> without working, just spending money. It was insane. <laughs> anyway, Tom, we are going to start concluding the video. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Likewise. I thought that this uh, is going to take like two, three hours because you and I will have a lot to talk about, <laughs> but I don't want to bore the audience <laughs> because we can stay like this forever. Yes. <laughs> when we had a coffee last week and we were chatting, I really enjoyed my conversation and we kind of had the same now, yes, even though uh, cameras are rolling. Still. Uh, they can. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoyed it, right? Yes. I'm so happy you're my nice. first guest on my podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you. You enjoyed it. And just for Janine on the, uh, in the expats group, her question, it's like, Ooh. maybe you will have a picture of me in a suit. Hey, <laughs> yes, I saw that. I saw there was a comment from Janine asking, did he finally find a suit? And you posted uh, I, a I, gif. <laughs> I, did f I did find a nice suit. And yeah, she might, she might see a picture. Okay. <laughs> She's your friend? Uh, I, you know I just online. talked to her a little bit. That's, uh, <laughs> Oh, now she's seeing you on camera here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Tom, Tom, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm happy that you've been my first guest on this podcast. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast that uh, we did today. I'm pretty sure that there is going to be quite interesting comments in the comment section down below. I'm ready for it. Tom is ready for it. We are going Always. to read them and <laughs> answer them as well. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like it down below. I would like to say a big thank you to Castme that they are hosting us in their studio here located in Sliema. Their details are going to be down in the description of this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and until I see you in my next one. Bye.